official duties of a mayor is to welcome visitors to, a, to our fair city. Uh, are you visiting from afar? <laughs> Where have you come from to get here? From somewhere in Georgia or further afield? Most of us live here in Atlanta. Oh, oh, Augusta. Augusta. From Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Well, that's, uh, that's far away. <laughs> Keep in mind, in 1865 in Atlanta, yes. getting to Atlanta was about a three to four, sometimes five day uh, trek. And uh, with Sherman in the way, it was a lot more, you know, a lot more of a difficulty at the time. Um, behind me is an ob obelisk that was um, to uh, Dr. Richard Arnold. And given the regard that many politicians are held in today, or not, it'd be kind of hard to believe that people would actually spend their own money to, make, to do a monument to a politician. Especially when his own, his choice was a small monument to the immediate left of the obelisk. What he did for, what Dr. Arnold did for Savannah was uh, a feat that made his uh, fellow citizens feel that it was definitely a, uh, a tribute well deserved. Dr. Arnold was born in Savannah in 1808 and in a, uh, an arc very seldom seen today. He was born in the, in the same house that he died uh, 68 years later. In fact, he was born and died in the same bed. His uh, parents were from Rhode Island and New Jersey, and when he was, his, he was orphaned by age six, raised by, then raised by uh, family. Went up to, um, when, when he was of age, he went to um, Princeton University for his undergraduate training and then on to the Medical College of Georgia, uh, Medical College of Pennsylvania, for his, um, Medical College of Georgia came later, yeah, Medical College say. of Pennsylvania for his medical training. Came back to Savannah, established a practice, uh, and started a family. During his practice days, uh, yellow fever was a continuing uh, nightmare for southern cities. Uh, some of the, uh, one of the worst uh, of the uh, yellow fever epidemics took place in Memphis uh, after the Civil War, in which almost 18,000 people died. The uh, toll here was not as high, but the Dr. Arnold became well re uh, regarded when he stayed and took uh, care of patients suffering from yellow fever in one of the earlier uh, outbreaks during the 1850s. It was at this time, too, that the national debate over slavery and the pre preservation of the Union started to heat up. Dr. Arnold looked upon him, himself as a Union Democrat. He had both free and slave servants, and actually had very little regard for either the fire breathers, the South Carolina secessionists, for whom he felt were willing to sacrifice everything for one issue, and he had very little regard for what for the northern abolitionist for whom uh, in their pushing a particular social position often profited directly through their own dealings either uh, with companies that had slaves or had slaves themselves however in spite of that the the war arrived as a reluctant secessionist uh, he was uh, he was saddened by the departure of, the, of Georgia from the Union and continued to uh, serve as a mayor in Savannah during the Civil War and coming and as a doctor as well. In December 1864 was his greatest uh, accomplishment. General Hardy, the Confederate general, had, um, was holding Savannah and Sherman was literally at the gates of Savannah, 15 miles away, no more. And Sherman had already gone through a, a path of uh, death and destruction, especially destruction, as he was able to make the South howl. Hardy and uh, the other Confederate troops left Savannah under cover of night, and at that, as soon as they had left, at that point, Dr. Arnold and some of his council members rode out to uh, Sherman's position and uh, petitioned to meet with the general. Sherman, in spite of his march through Georgia, was not quite the monster that he was made out to be. And in fact, his uh, knowledge of the South was really quite remarkable. And 
he was going at when the Civil War started. He was the president of the Louisiana Military College, which later became LSU. The Tigers nickname comes from the name of one of the, uh, the Louisiana regiments that fought in the Civil War. But anyway, Sherman was planning to stay in Baton Rouge for the rest of his life until the secession, which made uh, that an impossible issue. So Sherman was interested to hear what Dr. Arnold had to say. And what we said was, uh, General Sherman, the city of Savannah is an open city. We are willing to declare it an open city in which none of your troops and your will encounter any armed resistance and you will be able to uh, occupy the city without uh, risk of bloodshed. What we ask for in return for that is that the city be spared and not burnt. Sherman was able was willing to agree to that with one proviso. Military stores and cotton especially or uh, anything else of uh, military value would be confiscated. And that did happen. About 5,000 bales of cotton were waiting uh, here. Savannah was a major port even then. And were subject to uh, Sherman's famous telegraph to Lincoln. Uh, Mr. President, I present the city of Savannah to the United States as a Christmas present of, along with 5,000 bales of cotton and assorted military stores. Dr. Arnold continued to serve as mayor and uh, supervise the act activities of the city during the occupation, which was not for very long, because Sherman had other business. And after a little over a month, he, Sherman and the Army, the Army of the West, and when I say the Army of the West, these were men in, from Illinois, Minnesota, Iowa, the West at that time, and they had, they had other business to do, and they headed north to Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia was not quite so fortunate as Savannah. It was burnt to the ground because they looked upon it as a, uh, the term of the bacillus of rebellion. Uh, among That's a term that I can use in polite company. They had other terms as well. Uh, anyway, from there, uh, the war came to an end fairly soon afterwards. Dr. Arnold was shocked by the assassination of Lincoln. And then, uh, once the harbors opened up, sent boatloads of rice north to Boston to bring back food for all the population of Savannah because the food raising had been severely hampered. From there, he went back to being a mayor from time to time and also being, an, uh, being a doctor. And in 1876, uh, during another yellow fever epidemic, he uh, was finally uh, took ill with yellow fever and died, just only six days after the 100th anniversary of the uh, founding of the United States. Are there any questions? <laughs>